What a great first month of the season that we've had here in college football and in particular last week and last week we had all those ranked matchups and so we have a more clear picture of who's actually for real and maybe who is not. Now having said that I do think that we are in a rare season in this sport where we have more top end national championship caliber teams than maybe we've had at this point in any season in my career certainly in the last decade or so. It's been a top heavy sport let's face it and now we've got some parity so it begs the question who can actually win a national championship well who's above the line which teams are above the line this season and that line is are you a legitimate national championship caliber team so with that being said I racked my brain and I thought to myself okay who are the teams that could actually do it and here we are there's the 10. I had 10, and to be fair, I kind of grouped them into two different buckets. There were the obvious teams, and those are the five teams on top. Georgia, Washington, Texas, Michigan, and Ohio State. And I think that that's obvious. Obviously, Georgia is going to be in there, but Texas, with their consistency at the line of scrimmage, what they did to Alabama, and the fact that their consistency at the line of scrimmage, toughness, right, effort, discipline, their consistency on defense, toughness, effort, discipline, that's going to be more consistent than just being a skill position team like they were for the majority of the last decade. So they're more consistent. Obviously, Michigan's at the top of college football, and then the huge win for Ohio State last week against Notre Dame, that puts them in the obvious category as well. The next group of teams, it wasn't hard. It just took me a little bit longer to get through. And I had to decide between that group and the next group, which was the group that fell below the line. So first, let's talk about this group in the middle. These five teams, Oregon, Penn State, USC, Utah, and Florida State. Now, I believe that they are on the level. They're above the line. They can compete for legitimately and win a national championship. Oregon was almost in that top tier. The only thing that kept them out of that top tier for me was the fact that I really believe in Washington. Washington is for real, folks. I think Washington might be the scariest team in college football to face. You have to ask yourself, in order to be on this list, do you have an offense that can go compete with Michael Penix Jr., who's right now, I think, the Heisman favorite? after the first month. Even with as good as Caleb Williams has played, Michael Penix Jr. has been his equal and maybe even then some with that passing game. They got a great head coach and that's a team that's gonna be hard to beat. So that's why Oregon slipped just down on the next tier because they're gonna have to face Washington. Penn State, same reason. I don't dislike Penn State, I love Penn State, but they've got two other teams in their own division sitting there in the obvious category. Love what they do on defense. That's a team that's getting better and better, better every single week in particular on offense and that's a dangerous team then you got USC Utah and Florida State Utah obviously is going to get healthier with their quarterback USC they're playing great on the offensive side still need to tackle better and then there's Florida State now Florida State there's some caution lights going on right now on the dashboard with Florida State I think if you're watching closely you would know this team being outgained by 100 yards against Boston College being outgained by 100 yards against Clemson winning those games but it's not a dominant team Okay, so this is more in the line of the 2014 Jameis Winston team that kind of snuck into the playoff before getting beat than it is a dominant team that should be the number one team in the country. Now they're the teams, this five group, this group of five that didn't quite make it. Quickly, if you're Notre Dame, you had everything working in your favor. More experienced quarterback, home field environment, had Ohio State dead to rights and still couldn't win the game, that's why they fell below the line. Oklahoma, I've got questions about their top end on the offensive side. That run game has got to get better. Alabama is a really high floor, low ceiling team. Their quarterback puts a low ceiling on them, but their defense and running game gives them a really high floor. So they're going to be very good. I just don't know if they're going to be able to compete at the top end of college football, at least for this season. LSU is a team that I think we overvalued to begin the year. So if some are asking whether they're on the level, I don't believe that that's the case. In fact, they've given up 30 points per game defensively in their three games against power five opponents. They fall below the line. And then the last one, and we got to be careful about this Washington State right now they're below but if you're looking for this year's version of TCU it's Washington State 
Veteran quarterback that gets it done just like Max Duggan and their quarterback Cam Ward. A team that's probably going to be in a lot of one-score games, right? What do they do? Win a one-score game last week against Oregon State. Finding a way to win. Is it always going to be impressive? No. But could they be there in the end? Maybe. That's a team to watch out for. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.